Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. This is another super mini mail call, and I'm gonna get right to it. This package comes from Reinhardt in Austria. Hi to all my viewers in Austria. This is the Extra Large Packet Box XL. It's very yellow. I'm not totally sure how to open this thing. I think I, I think it has a trap door on the side or something. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. I'm definitely not familiar with this packing method, but we have boxception here, boxes inside of boxes. I think this one is just a uh, filler. All right, here is the item and there's a note inside. Oh, we have stuff inside this box, but this other one is definitely just air. But look at that, the packet box XL would make a great kitty condo. All right, so let me retrieve the note here. All right, Einhard says, this is the package we talked about a few weeks ago. It's the ISO MD-B12-60 high resolution graphics card. I included all the driver and software diskettes and all the documentation that came with the card. Unfortunately, most of the paperwork is in German. That's okay, we can use Google Translate. Due to the lack of a matching PC, I couldn't test either the card or the disks. I hope you get some use of it. Thanks for all the entertaining and interesting content and keep up the great work with best regards from Austria. Thank you very much, Reinhard. Let's see what we got in here. I had a recent video on this channel of another PC high resolution graphics card. And this one here is the ISO Corporation made in Japan professional display system. So I'm assuming it's very similar to the other card, which was from the company Vectrix. MD-B12, oh, here we go. MD-B12-60, ultra, ultra high resolution color graphics board for the IBM AT, 1280 by 1024 and 256 color out of 16.8 or 16.7 million colors. And it has a graphics BIOS that comes with it for emulating monochrome and CGA and other things. Very interesting. I'm gonna peek inside here to check out what's in here. Aha, the original cable, okay. Well, I don't know if this is the original cable, but it is a cable and it does have a high density 15 pin connector like a VGA adapter going to BNC. I am sure when this card was new, it cost a fortune and you probably needed to use this monitor with it that supported this kind of thing that cost thousands of dollars. I think the dash 60 means it's 60 Hertz because on the side here, it says 60 Hertz on this sticker. So as I had mentioned in the previous video, the problem with these graphics boards is that when you don't have the software drivers, it's pretty hard to know how to use them. Usually the disks included patched versions or drivers to work with various uh, applications like AutoCAD. And without that, you're kind of stuck and dead in the water. All right, here is the card. Oh, it's got foam and peanuts stuck to it. Now, if you watch that super mini mail call on that other graphics card, if I recall, it had exactly the same processor. It was over here on this corner and it had the same RAM DAC the BT458, actually I think the other one was a 453, and this is a 458. This has dip switches up here, the other card had it over here, and this does have a normal D-sub VGA type connector on it. RAM is here, here, obviously has RAM slots here. It says vSIM though, and I don't think these are normal, no, 59 pins. 72 pin is what you would, Usually see there's pin one and up there it says 59. And along the top it says vSIM. So video memory of some kind. So unfortunately this card, we are stuck with this onboard memory and that is it. Expansion header here, some kind of a header here. So I assume a daughter board could go on there. ISO, E-I-Z-O branded ICs here, two of them. From a decode perspective, of course we have the two BIOSes here, but it says here Toshiba, 90, 1990, so this card is definitely from the 90s. When most VGA cards were probably stuck at low resolutions, this one is ultra 
high resolution. Ultra, ooh. All right, let's see what goodies are in here. Okay, so this little bag. So I guess you could wire up your own monitor connection if you didn't have the right thing on there. It has the HD 15 and looks like you could make your own cable. Okay, we have, uh, oh, what I assume Maybe this goes to like the VGA card in your system. So you could have a VGA card and this together. And then as far as this cable goes, this looks a lot like the VGA feature connector. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what this is. So I bet you this card coexists with a VGA card. What is the VGA feature connector you say? It is this connector right here. This connector goes on like that. And then what this probably does is connect to here and then these cards would sit in the system together. And that probably allows you to connect your VGA monitor to this card and the video from this will feed through into the VGA card and you can either overlay them together or you could switch back and forth without having any external cables. Typically I saw these used back in the day with VGA cards for video decoders. So you'd have like an MPEG decoder card, MPEG-1, and what would happen is you connect it to the feature connector, your monitor would be plugged into here, and you could play full screen or in a window MPEG, and it would be overlaying that graphic, sending that graphics through this connector into the card to be combined with your video display through this cable. All right, what else is in here? Oh, we got a floppy disk here. This is the ACAD or AutoCAD drivers, I guess. Not sure what that word is. And on the cable here, there's a little thing here, MDC53. So I'm really feeling that this is almost certainly goes with that card here. So we have RGB and we have two sync wires, H and V sync. We have some floppy disk here, OS2 device support disk, DGIS system version three, AutoCAD version 2.5, BGI. I'm not sure what this stuff is. Obviously AutoCAD, I recognize. Microsoft Windows 286 and 386 and Windows version 3.0 drivers here. Ventura Publisher, this was desktop publishing application. Gem Desktop, I guess. WordPerfect version 5 and 5.1. What exactly did you need drivers for WordPerfect? Maybe for like the print preview or something. TIGA drivers, so Word, WordPerfect, Lotus Symphony, Gem, Microsoft Windows again, all the various versions. So I will definitely be creating images for these. It's a 1.2 megabyte disk. Probably all of these are, that one is as well. I'll create images, I will upload these to the internet because um, it's a good chance that these disks are nowhere to be found. And if you wanna get one of these cards working, you need these. All right, we have some documentation here. Let's just quickly check this out. The user manual, and this is in English, ultra high res color and grayscale graphics board. Looks like they made a 60 hertz and a 70 hertz version. Looks like this card was designed to be used with the Isocolor Display T660 and all these other monitors here. 16 or 256 colors with optional memory expansion. 16 or 256 with optional memory extension module displayable out of a total of 16.7. So does that mean without the extra RAM that I can only do 16 colors? That's kind of lame. 70 hertz non-interlaced if you have that. Two types of system fonts supported. And it says down here that it does not rely on the host CPU. It uses the graphics processor, this TI 32-bit chip here for six MIPS. Ooh, six MIPS. So the MDB12 supports regular CGA and monochrome modes. But if you want to use it with VGA, you use the pass-through option or there was a daughter board that had the VGA processor on it. And it looks like there was a flex scan, a multi-scan monitor that supported all the high resolution modes and VGA modes all in one. And it looks like to use it in VGA pass-through, you do have to configure dip switches. You can do a two monitor mode, you need dip switches. So that's why having the manual is so essential because there'd be no way to figure it out. Well, very hard to figure it out with um, without the information on the dip switches here. So there's the ROM mapping and here are the various settings for the different emulation modes one monitor or two monitor system and now i understand what that connector was for in that little bag it's like a terminator or something you plug it in your vga board so it thinks there's a monitor there when a color monitor is connected to the other card to this card 
the VGA video connector should be attached to the VGA card. So the VGA pass-through signals goes through to the B12 board for display on that one monitor. And it talks here about the VGA daughter board, which of course we don't need. And there's the confirmation that we're only gonna get 16 out of 24-bit color with a lookup table, so it has a palette, or to use the two face colors, we need the additional memory, which of course we don't have. And if you're gonna run text mode on this card, look at the font size, 12 by 20 pixels. And it confirms here 512K is standard and up to two megabytes is available with those extra little uh, memory cards, which I don't have. And there is the pinout for the video connector on the board, pretty cool along with the VGA pass-through and the daughter board connector, and that's it. And then we have the software installation manual. There's a warranty card here. This is just amazing. It's a place stamp here, and it would go all the way to Japan. Card comes with a limited warranty. We have another a software driver installation for the uh, presentation driver. That would be for OS2, if I recall. Oh, we got some errata here, additional information. All righty. And then this here, I assume, is the German translation of much of what's in there. Oh, no, actually, no. Driver installation. Oh, look at that. Staple rusted. <laughs> so how to install the uh, various software drivers. FastCAD, AutoCAD, AutoCAD 386, AutoShade, AutoSketch. So I think at this point, I'm just going to plug this into a PC just to make sure that it works. Because to do a more in-depth video looking at the software that's on here and trying to get it working with Windows and whatnot is gonna be far beyond the scope of this Super Mini Mail Call video. It's probably already a bit long as it is. So I'm gonna use my 3D6 SX here, it's 40 megahertz, and we'll connect this beast up here. Gonna have to grab the manual just to make sure it's configured for single monitor mode. Currently this card is set for no emulation at all. So I guess it's uh, basically it would run in parallel to something else. And then when you ran the software that used this, it would, it would power up the monitor. Actually, it has a test pattern mode, which I'm gonna set that. So that's 678 to off. And the default ROM mapping is CC00 to CCFF, on, on, off, off, on. On, on, off, off, on. This is the connection to my LCD monitor here. It's set for VGA, and let's turn it on. Look at that. It's totally working. It's doing its test pattern there. <laughs> that is pretty cool. It freaking works. I gotta say it, right? I gotta say it. Look, that's awesome. Let's look at the resolution that this is running at here. Ah, keeps blanking out the signal, which causes the monitor to go to lose the menu. Information, quick, 1024, 1280 by 1024 at 60 hertz. Okay, definitely that is working. So let's put this back in the right mode. So back here to the manual, we're going to go to CGA emulation. That's off, on, on, off, on, on. There it is. Okay, here we go. Should get the post screen on there. Well, <laughs> it's working. Cool. I wouldn't be surprised if I go check the information on the monitor, and it is. It's running at 1280 by 1024 at 60 hertz. So we're getting that really high resolution font that I was talking about. The CGA colors it picks are weird. This is supposed to be the brown, but it's kind of like a dark yellow. Like it's not supporting the dark yellow, which is actually brown on CGA color properly, which is so weird because this thing has definable colors. It's using a RAM DAC. The colors could be anything that you want. A display switch, not proper, whatever. I think maybe there's a jumper on this motherboard needs to change. All right, let's boot this up. I have the XT IDE in here. It's kind of weird. The scrolling is a bit slow. Uh, if you can see that, like it just, I guess because it's actually running a frame buffer here with the text mode, it's like emulated in a graphical frame buffer. The scrolling is definitely not smooth at all. Let's run speed 600 and see what this says for the... Gr the <laughs> Did you see that? Oh, it's so slow. 700 characters per second. Not fast. 
Let's try David Murray's Planet X3 here in CGA mode. Let's see if this can even do it at all. Like, I don't even know what's gonna happen. I'm assuming the emulation that this card's got is strictly to just get you running, not to actually play any games. Hey, the graphics are working though. And yes, it's uh, pretty sluggish the way it's working. <laughs> I mean, considering um, on this machine, which is 40 megahertz, this game would fly. Uh, this is this is pretty slow. Let's check out the different palettes. So there's the different color palettes available. Let's see what happens when I pick composite mode. Okay, well, it's just running at 640 by 200. PC Junior Tandy mode. And that doesn't quite work. I loaded up Load Runner here. <laughs> okay, the game is playing too fast because the computer's too fast. Uh, but the it should be running at a nice smooth 60 frames per second, and it's certainly not. So again, it's that emulation is, is strictly emulation, as it says. All right, I think this video has gone on long enough. This card works, which is super cool. I mean, I haven't tested any of the high resolution modes, but at least the, the test pattern works and the emulation works. And how cool that it actually works with a normal CGA monitor or VGA monitor, rather, this LCD here. So thank you very much, Reinhardt, for sending this in, especially because, like uh, we showed, has the manual and the discs, something that's just completely, completely unusual for uh, these types of cards. Whenever I find these, I have nothing and I can't really get them to do anything. This one, actually, I'll be able to make a follow-up video really showing this thing off. If anyone has ever used one of these cards or any of the other high-res cards at the time, I'd love to hear about it in the comment section below. Of course, um, if you want me to test out specific aspects of this, definitely let me know as well down below and so I can use that when I make the follow-up. If anyone has any ideas where I can get these video RAM modules to expand this thing to 256 colors, that would be cool as well because we could see how fast this processor actually is when it comes to like moving uh, the video memory around, uh, blitting and stuff for scrolling. See if this thing is actually fast because that C CGA emulation, not so fast. And if you enjoyed this video, I would uh, appreciate a thumbs up if you did. And if you didn't, you know what to do and hit that subscribe button for my second channel if you haven't already. And a huge thanks to my patrons for supporting Adrian's Digital Basement. I really appreciate it. Their names are scrolled up the side of the screen. I think really fast because I don't have enough time in the outros of these videos to do those properly. And I guess that's going to be it. So stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.